Hey everyone. Again, thanks to everybody that jumped over. Someone asked me about mufflers last week. Muffler mods. Um, I'm gonna try and keep this as brief as possible. I'm gonna I'm gonna let you know how I see it. Um, comment on how you how you see muffler mods. Is bigger better? Is smaller better? First off, I see a lot of people on the internet doing all kinds of crazy things to mufflers. Some of it I really like and some of it I go, ooh, I don't like that. This is an aftermarket 272 muffler. Look how small that is, okay? This muffler has a divider in the middle, meaning, okay, we got to back it up a little bit. So you got your ported saw or your stock saw, right? What happens? We talked about in the last video. Piston comes down, exhaust cracks, exhaust starts going out. This is under low pressure. Your explosion that's pushing down the piston is under high pressure. So what happens? Well, pressure differentials happen, and it 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 makes things wanna. It makes air wanna go to low pressure, right? So you have high pressure here. Low pressure in this muffler. So think about it this way. Your exhaust cracks, your exhaust gases that are spent, go into here. Well, what happens to them? Do they just go straight out the pipe? No, they actually don't. They go into here, they hit, they swirl back, and they actually come back in to the exhaust port. That's what's going on every time, hundreds of times per second. When that saws in the wood, that's what's happening, okay? So it goes in here. It either hits the divider in the middle or it hits the front and it comes back. Okay? This is something I think we can all agree on. This one has a divider in the middle. I don't necessarily like that. I think it traps a lot of heat in the muffler. And I think it comes back too fast. Because remember, when your exhaust opens... Your transfer is open just below that. So as that exhaust is going into this muffler, the transfers are on the side. That transfer air starts coming out and it's actually pulled because all that hot gas is going through here and it creates a vacuum. Okay, so your transfers come through. So now some of that air and fuel ends up in your muffler. You ever take your muffler off and look after you run your saw? What do you see in there? You see... It's, it's gas and oil in there. Well, that is fresh charge going into there. And what does that do? It comes back. Okay? I think this is something we can all agree on. Okay, there's more to a muffler than just a sound deadening device. So what do guys do a lot of times? I see it all the time. Guy will take a muffler and he'll cut two giant holes in here. Right? Two giant holes. On a stock saw. I'm sure it sounds rowdy, but on a on a stock saw, in my opinion, I like the 60 to 70 percent of your port width. Okay, so say your exit would be to here. We'll say that's 70 percent. You can measure that and figure it out. You don't want more than that. And now, if you put a second outlet in here, you would have to count this one or cut it out and get rid of it. Okay? So why don't you want your muffler to open? Um, think about it. When you do a muffler mod, your saw gets lean. You gotta re Everybody says, readjust your saw after you do a muffler mod. Well, why is that? Because what ends up happening is that gas and that transfer charge of fresh air and fuel end up too much of it goes out and not enough comes back right exhaust scavenging so we want it to come back and you're actually pulling in some of that charge into here and that's why i believe and you, and you can read this there's a lot of two stroke books some of that accounts for more compression okay when the saw is running it has to, it's coming back in. Remember, it's only a syringe. It's pulling down, right? It's pulling down on the downstroke, right? 
and it's going up on the upstroke. Well, it's a syringe. It's either pulling air and fuel in, or it's pushing exhaust out. That's what it does, right? Okay? So, when you do a muffler mod, start small, okay? Like this one here, I'd probably put another one of those right here and try it. And probably, I don't know if you see that, I would get rid of that divider. When you have a divider, I don't even see any holes in it, which means it ends up, it's probably going down. I don't like that, because that gets really hot. And what's underneath that? Your case, right? And you saw here, your case. When you heat this case, what are you heating? Everything, okay? And that'll make your saw get leaner. It won't be lean when you tune it on the bench. But remember, if you're a firewood cutter or you're bucking up a big tree, you might do 20 cuts back to back. Especially if you're doing production work, you ain't waiting for your saw to cool down. On the first cut, on the first cut, that saw's fine. By the fifth cut, it's getting warm. By the 15th cut, it's starting to get lean. By the 20th cut, it might be too lean. That's my thought on it. So, what I'm trying to get at here, there's a balance between venting your muffler out, getting the heat out, which is important. That's why muffler mods are important. An air-cooled engine loses horsepower as it gets hotter. That's why we went to liquid-cooled, because they run at a consistent temperature, and we can get a fuel curve and, and uh, a timing curve that works with the operating temperature, which is like this. An air-cooled motor, the operating temperature is like this. So the cooler we can keep our saw, the better it's going to run in theory, right? These are my thoughts, guys. If you think I'm, I'm going on, the, on a limb here and I, I'm not sure, please, I, I'd like to discuss this. So, you want to open the muffler up, but not too much. And I know it's hard. You want this loud, crazy sounding saw. But less is more, you know. On a ported saw, most ported saws will take more of a muffler mod for two reasons. One, they run hotter because you're making more horsepower, right? And two, they pull more fuel through. That's just the nature of a ported saw. You're running more fuel and more air through the saw. The more air you pull, the more fuel comes with it, right? So on a stock saw, keep it small. You know, this one's on the smallish side. Put another one of those here. On most stock saws, that'll be fine. On a ported saw, play with it. Go big or go home, right? I mean, you can you can put a pretty decent size muffler mod, you know, and, and play with it. Uh, I typically do mine on the sides. Not that there's anything wrong with the front ones, and they look cool, don't get me wrong. Those dual port mufflers that guys are making, they look neat. I kind of like mine on the side, because I think she's going to bounce back a little better if she hits this wall than if she's wide open there. That's just me. I, I might try one. I, I really like what some guys are doing with the, with the, with the uh, you know, exits like this. I think it looks cool. I've seen ones like that. Okay, so... Remember, piston comes down, exhaust cracks, goes into here. After the exhaust cracks for a little bit, transfers open, you get that swirl, and in she goes. Right? You want some of that, when, when the piston's going down, at some point it's going to start pulling it back. Right? Because remember, it's a syringe. Pressure's going out, it pulls transfer with it, piston keeps coming down. At some point, you're going to have more pressure in here than you are in the combustion chamber because the transfers have already emptied, the piston is at bottom dead center basically, or almost there. This will should become more pressurized and it's going to start coming back. So you're getting fuel drawn out of the transfers and this starts coming back in. And then the piston's coming up and it closes. Okay, how can you not get some compression from that? But you want that extra fuel and exhaust scavenging to come back in. In my opinion, if you let too much of it out, you're going to have a saw that has a tendency to go lean. And it can go lean like that. I've done exhaust mods that are too big. 
they sound great and run good, but once that saw gets warm, you'll notice it, well, I, I've noticed it has a tendency to go lean, just suddenly. That's dangerous because if you're doing work and your saw has a tendency to go lean, maybe you don't hear it or you push it a few cuts and then, boom, you just blew your saw up. Okay? So, I'm going to pause it here. I'm going to show you an example of two muffler mods on two ported saws. Actually, I'm going to go three. Okay, 576 XPG, auto-tune. Muffler paint burning off. See that? That's a muffler mod. Um, there's the stock hole. There's what I did. I cut through the baffle with a rotary grinder and grinded through the outer and inner baffle. Okay. Notice it's not super big. Um, this, this muffler has a baffle that runs on an angle. These mufflers, look at that. That paint, I've put that paint on, on headers on Harley Davidson's and not had it cook off like this. And you look, it baked right off. These mufflers get stupidly hot. Which makes the case get hot. And I honestly think that is the number one reason why these saws burn up. Because of this muffler. Um, doing a muffler mod on this saw, it runs ridiculously better. It doesn't get as hot, it has more power. Better throttle response. Okay, so there's one example. This saw is stock. It's not ported. Here's an example of an exhaust that's probably a little bit bigger than I like or I wanted. We'll get to that in a second. 365 Special, 48 millimeter. This is a 65 cc saw. I built this one on the channel. You guys have seen it before. Uh, I did a full wrap, West Coast Dogs, and... Uh, High, high flow air filter top cover. Okay. Oh, she's not pretty. There's some good booger welded on there. This is my saw though and whatever. That's a 12 gauge shotgun barrel. Okay, you can... That's like three quarters of an inch. I also have the stock outlet. This is probably a little big for this saw. But you know what? I was... See, here's the thing. My original plan was to block... That top cover. I don't know if you can see it here. Okay. I My original plan was to block that and just run this. Well, this saw runs like a scalded cat. Um, this thing is ridiculous. I thought, I'm not changing anything about it um, for now under this build parameter. So uh, I do have some plans. This saw is probably going to get a big bore kit. But... Uh, more about that later. I'm actually, I'm actually uh, wanting to get somebody else, uh, a buddy of mine, a good, a good man and a good porter to pour the top end for this, just because I want to run somebody else's ported saw, because that's fun, right? Um, so there's an example. This I'd say is a little big. It works, um, but be careful. This is too big for this size of a saw. Um, I think in this case, though, I did so much lower transfer work to this saw. But... Okay, moving along. 272 is your stock outlet. This is a hollow muffler. There's nothing in here. I put a second deflector. Uh, this is like a 50 rancher, 55 rancher. I had a smashed muffler. I put some inserts in there and, and uh, threaded these in. Looks fairly stock. I did have to cut the top cover. This top cover was smashed anyways. This is about 70-75% of exhaust port. Um, probably too open for a stock 272, but remember, this thing's ported pretty warm. It moves a lot of air. I don't want it to get too hot. So, there's another example of an exhaust mod. Just, you know, use a step drill, drill a hole in there, and mount the deflector, and away you go. Here's an example of a warm ported saw, 630 Super. This is the one with the 266 top end. I uh, uh, machined a 40 thou pop-up, dropped the cylinder, high compression, pretty pretty spicy timing numbers. I didn't do anything to this muffler because look at it. 
you can see the screw that's holding the side cover on. I mean, you could tickle that piston. Let's see if we can get that on it. Okay. This thing is so open, I'm like, I'm going to run it like that. And I wouldn't, I wouldn't touch this muffler. This saw runs so good like that. So there's an example of a super wide open factory muffler. Again, there's no divider in these old saws. I think that's the main thing for me. I do muffler mods to get the heat out. And when you get the heat out, the saw's happy. It stays cooler. Okay? I'm just going to flip your... I know. Beautiful ceiling in the shop. Here, let's... There we go. Hello. Okay, so that's my take on mufflers. Um, when I get a welder set up here, I'm going to start building pipes because I want to know. I can only comment on things that I've done, and that's pretty much the only thing I'm going to comment on on this channel. Um, um, I learn from what other people do, but I'm, I'm not going to I'm not gonna slam how another builder does work. I do things the way I do them, and other people do them the way they do them. So, anyways, one of my subscribers, one of you guys out there, can't remember who did it. I wrote it down, um, wanted to know about muffler mods. That's, I have more here, but that's uh, that's a pretty good example of what I do. Um, some are quick and dirty, some take more time. Um, it just depends on, on how much time you have and what you want to put into it. Um, some ugly muffler mods work well, and some beautiful mufflers put too much exhaust out. So, in my opinion, remember that. Everything I say here is from what I've experienced. I don't know everything, and... I'm, I'm learning every day on every saw. Every saw I build, I learn something. Um, I change things up. I try little things. That's the only way because eventually you get those little tricks that seem to work on almost every saw. And that's that's when you start to figure out how all this stuff works. Anyhow, as always, thanks for watching. Take her easy.